My name is Ravi Mishra. I'm a technical marketing engineer in Cisco Server Machine and Virtualization Group. Hello, my name is DJ Tang and I'm a technical leader at Cisco Lab Services and I'm supporting server switching and virtualization marketing group. Today we are going to show you how you can quickly set up Cisco Unified Computing System or UCL for short and accelerate your transition to unified computing architecture to unify your network computing and virtualization system. The agenda of this video is to show you how you can quickly install a Cisco UCS system including all the components. We'll start from physical installation including cabling and then configure Cisco UCS Fabric Interconnect which also hosts UCS Manager. We'll go through UCS Manager system configuration and then set up various ports in Fabric Interconnect such as server ports, storage port and uplink port. Once you configure those ports, all chassis and server will start getting discovered automatically. I will explain you the discovery process and how it works. Next, we will update the firmware of Fabric Interconnect to the latest version. After upgrading firmware, we'll go through how to create service profile for a server and deploy it on that server. Service profile at logical representation of a server, which includes server identity like UID, WWN, etc. Server configuration like boot order, firmware, etc. We create service profile for B203 and C240 M3 server. Service profile extend their power through the use of template. When you create a template, you can easily instantiate multiple blades of server with this. If a server is deployed using a template, any changes that are made to the template, for example firmware, will be cascaded to all associated server. I will show you how you can create service profile template and attach it to a B series server and using the same template how you can instantiate a C-series server. Lastly, I will show you the power of template by upgrading firmware of all server using service profile template. This is the topology of Cisco UCS setup which we are going to configure on this video. There are two Gen 2 Fabric Interconnect 6248UP. UP means unified ports. These Fabric Interconnect or FIs are connected to management network for management access uplink to local area network for all Ethernet traffic and uplink to storage area network for all FCOE traffic. These two FIs are connected in a cluster configuration which provides high availability. If one fabric interconnect becomes unavailable, the other will take over. To configure the cluster, you need to connect these two fabric interconnect together directly with two Ethernet cables connecting to their L1 and L2 cluster port as shown in this video. Cisco UCS 5100 series plate server chassis provides an enclosure to house up to 8 half width or 4 full width blade server, their associated fabric extender or IOM and 4 power supplies. In this setup we are using 2 half width blade B200M3 and B230M2. These blades can be inserted into any slots. These blades are also hot swappable. In this video, I'm using slot 1 and slot 2 for these two blades. How you can connect chassis to fabric interconnect? You can either use 1, 2, 4 or 8 cables per module. For system resiliency and throughput, it is recommended that you use a minimum of 2 connections per IO module. These are IO modules in the back of UCS chassis. In this video, we are using new 2208 IO module inside the chassis. IU module A connected to Fabric Interconnect A and IU module B to the Fabric Interconnect B, each with two cables. You can also create port channel between IU module and Fabric Interconnect for higher system availability and throughput. This video also demonstrates the benefit of converged infrastructure where both B-series blade and C-series rack mount servers are managed from the UCS manager. For this integration, we are using two Nexus 2232 fabric extender in this setup connected to fabric interconnects. These are ports connected between fabric extender A and B to FEX 2232 A and B. 
In this topology, rack mount servers C240M3 and C260M2 are connected to these Nexus 2232 FEX. This FEX provides similar topology as IOM in the chassis for blade. These are the two LOM LAN on motherboard port on rack mount server we are using for management connectivity. These two are 10 gig data port connected to FEX A and B with two next cable. These servers are by default configured for UCSM managed from factory. We are not using dedicated management port on these server as the management of these server are integrated to UCS manager. Also you need GLCT connector to connect Gigi management LOM port in both server to both facts. This is the final topology after all the components in this setup physically installed and plugged in with their appropriate cabling. After completing the physical installation, cabling and ensure the connectivity, next step is to set up the primary and standby fabric interconnect. This is the prerequisite information required in this step. We need three IP address, one for fabric interconnect A, one for B, and third one for virtual IP. Information about the net mask and the gateway. We also need block of IP address, four or more for KVM console access. All these IP should be in the same subnet. The initial configuration of the fabric interconnect can be done by basic system configuration. Connect the console port of first fabric interconnect to be configured. Enter the configuration method as console. Setup mode as setup. Configure this fabric interconnect into the cluster. Enter the password for admin. And then IP address, net mask and the gateway for this fabric interconnect. Enter the IP address of the cluster. After applying and saving the configuration, this fabric interconnect has been set up. Now the next step would be to configure the secondary fabric interconnect into the cluster. To configure the secondary fabric interconnect, you need to open the console port of secondary fabric interconnect, enter the configuration method as console. It will automatically detect the presence of a peer fabric interconnect because these two fabric interconnect has been connected directly with L1 and L2 interfaces. Enter the password to retrieve all the configuration of the cluster. Enter the physical IP address of this fabric interconnect. Apply and save the configuration. Now both the fabric interconnect has been set up and you can access the UCS manager from the virtual IP address of the cluster. In this step, we are going to access Cisco UCS manager and configure various settings in UCS manager. After configuring both the fabric interconnect, next step is to test the IP connectivity to cluster IP. This is the IP address from where we are going to access the UCS manager. Cisco UCS Manager is the management service for all of the component in Cisco UCS instance. Cisco UCS Manager runs on the fabric interconnect and keeps configuration data synchronized between the pair of fabric interconnect. The primary access method covered here for using the Cisco UCS Manager is Java-based GUI client, which you launch from a web browser by entering the IP address of the cluster. Enter the username and the password for UCS Manager, which you configured while configuring the Fabric Interconnect. The Cisco UCS Manager GUI consists of a navigation pan on the left side of the screen and a work pan on the right side of the screen. The navigation pan allows you to browse through container and objects and to drill down easily through layer of system management. Main topology view provides the overall topology of the system. There are multiple tab across the top of the navigation pan like equipment tab for inventory of hardware component and hardware specific configuration. Service profile configuration and policies and pools can be accessed from server tab. LAN and SAN specific configuration can be done from LAN and SAN tab. Configuration specific to VMFX can be done from VM tab and all the system user management tasks like creating new user, setting up role-based access control 
fault and error management task and troubleshooting of those can be done from admin tab. As part of the system setup, we will configure time zone, verify management IP address setting, create a test user, and set up IP address block for KVM access of the server. Click on time zone management and select your respective time zone from the drop down menu. After this, we will verify the management IP address from UCS Manager. You can see management IP address of both Fabric Interconnect A and B as well as virtual IP address of the cluster. We will also enable management interface monitoring policy. This policy defines how the management interface on the Fabric Interconnect should be monitored and help system to generate fail report and false in case of management interface failure. As a best practice, we will enable ping default gateway as monitoring mechanism, which will generate a fail report and ultimately an alert if management interface of the Fabric Interconnect fail to ping its default gateway. Cisco UCS provide out-of-band access for KVM and remote DVD USB access for every blade. This can be configured from Management IP Pool from Admin tab by entering the block of IP addresses. Typically, these ad addresses are configured on the same subnet as the UCS Manager IP address. This access is made possible by associating a pool of IP address for the cut-through interface that correspond with each blade's baseboard management controller. The binding of these address to the blade happen automatically with no manual intervention required. Next, we will create a test user for providing the role-based access control for limiting the access to this UCS manager. Enter the login ID, first name, last name, and the password for this test user. Also, select the roles as network, operation, and service profile. Click OK. Alternatively, we can also limit this test user to a particular locale by creating a new locale. As you can see here, the admin has the full access of the system, but the test user has a very limited set of access to the system. In this step, we will configure the ports in Fabric Interconnect. Fabric Interconnect provides different types of ports, like server port for southbound connectivity, uplink port for northbound Ethernet traffic, fiber channel port for northbound storage traffic. First of all, we need to configure range of Ethernet and FC port the position of the slider determines the type of ports. You can move slider to left or to right to choose desired number of port for Ethernet or fiber channel traffic, both on fixed and expansion module. The bacon LEDs indicate which unified ports are configured for Ethernet traffic and which ports are selected for FC traffic. There are some restrictions like Ethernet ports and fiber channel ports must be grouped together in separate blocks and alternating these ports are not allowed. Port mode changes on fixed module will reboot the fabric interconnect. Port channel configuration and server VNIC failover will minimize the disruption if configured apart from fabric interconnect cluster. If we revisit our topology diagram, you will see that we need five ports in Fabric Interconnect. Two for IOM on B-Series chassis, one for 2232FX. These are southbound server ports. Apart from that, we need uplink port for Ethernet and uplink port for fiber channel traffic. There are multiple ways through which you can set up different ports in the Fabric Interconnect. In this method, you can go to physical display, click on the port, right click and configure. In this case, port number one and port number two are connected to B-Series chassis, so these are server port. Similarly, port number 17 is uh, Ethernet uplink port. And port number 18 is connected to FAX. This is also a server port. Port number 31 on expansion module is already configured as FC uplink port when we change the mode of the port. When you configure a port and if the port is connected properly, it will turn green. In this video, due to the scope of the video, the fiber channel ports are not configured to a uplink fiber channel switch, but there are plenty of collateral available on Cisco.com which explain you how to configure fiber channel connectivity to the
fabric interconnect. The second method is to click on unconfigured port and select the ports which you want to configure. Just like we did for the fabric interconnect A, port number 1 and 2 are configured as server port. Port number 17 is configured as uh, Ethernet uplink port and port 18 is configured as server port connected to FAX 2232B. Now you can see all the ports which are configured in this Fabric Interconnect. This completes the port configuration in both Fabric Interconnect A and B. Now in the next step I will explain you the server discovery process. Once you set up all the ports in the fabric interconnect like server port and uplink port, you will see the chassis and the faxes and all the rack mount server will start getting discovered automatically in the UCS manager. For example, this fax is getting discovered and also the chassis uh, with multiple blade is being discovered automatically once you configure the ports in the fabric interconnect. If you click on the main topology view, you, you will see the overall topology of the system um, and how these chassis and servers are connected to the fabric interconnect. In this case, uh, both server 1 and 2 uh, is not yet been configured, so that's why you won't see the connectivity, but the chassis is, is all connected to both the fabric interconnect. Once you click on any server, you will get more information about the server, what is the type of the server, uh, how many CPUs, memory, and all the inventory information can be easily accessible from this place once the chassis is being discovered. Under Equipment tab, there is a global policy called Chassis Discovery Policy. The purpose of this policy is to tell UCS Manager the minimum number of I.O. module to Fabric Interconnect links that must be present in order for the chassis to be properly discovered. For example, if the chassis discovery policy is configured for four links, Cisco UCS Manager cannot discover any chassis that is wired for one link or two link. Keep this number as system default of one link. You can also change the setting of C-Series rack server discovery policy and power policy of the chassis. To see more detailed discovery process, you can click on any server and under the status tab, you can see what's going on right now with that server. Um, you can easily see that uh, uh, if the uh, server has been discovered or is in the process of getting discovered. Once the server is fully discovered, you will see under the main topology view that uh, how the server is connected to uh, FAX and how the FAX is connected to the fabric interconnect. For B-Series blade, this is the hybrid display once all the chassis and blades will get discovered. You can easily see that uh, uh, how the different I.O. modules are connected to the fabric interconnect and how the internal connectivity from I.O. modules to different blades in the chassis looks like. In this case, we have two half-width blade connected in slot 1 and 2 and these two slots are connected to the I.O.M. internally. Once all the blades and server got fully discovered, the next step is to upgrade the firmware of Fabric Interconnect and UCS Manager. To find out the current installed version of firmware, under Equipment, click on Firmware Management tab, and then click on Install Firmware. Expand the tree view to get the running version of the firmware. In this case, running version and startup version of both Fabric Interconnect and UCSM is 202Q. So we need to update the firmware of the system to the latest version. To download the firmware software, you need to go to cisco.com and search for UCS software. Click on Cisco UCS infrastructure and UCS manager software. Select software type as UCS bundle. The latest version is 203A and you will see three different type of files there. You need to download all the three files. These files represent various bundle.
first file which ends in A is the infrastructure file which contains software for Fabric Interconnect, UCSM, chassis management controller, etc. The second bundle which ends in B is for B series Blade Server product. And finally, C series rack mount server can be upgraded from bundle C. Click on all the three files and add to card and download these to your local system. From there, we will upload these files to Fabric Interconnect in next step. After downloading the file, go to Download Task under Firmware Management in UCS Manager. Click on plus sign on the right side. Browse to these files which we just downloaded. Select first file which ends in A and click OK. This will start the process of uploading the file from your local system to Fabric Interconnect. Alternatively, you can also upload these files from remote file system with protocols such as FTP, SCP, etc. Now repeat the same process for other two bundle which ends in B and ends in C. As I mentioned earlier, firmware can be upgraded by two methods. One with the direct upgrade at the endpoint and the second method is to upgrade the endpoint with service profile policy. In the next step, I will show you how we are going to upgrade the firmware direct at the endpoint for Fabric Interconnect and UCS Manager. Then later in the video, I will show you that how we can leverage the service profile to upgrade the policy. Now all the three files have been uploaded into the Fabric Interconnect. Next step is to upgrade the firmware of Fabric Interconnect and UCSM. We will follow the direct upgrade endpoint method for firmware upgrade. Generally, direct upgrade method has two steps. First step is to update the firmware. During this stage, the system copies the selected firmware version from the primary Fabric Interconnect to the backup partition in the endpoint and verifies that the firmware image is not corrupt. Second is to activate the firmware which involves setting up backup version of image as startup version and reboot the endpoint if you do not specify set startup version only or define maintenance policy for user acknowledged reboot. Both Fabric Interconnect and UCSM firmware upgrade require only second step as the specified firmware image already exists on these endpoints after we uploaded the image file. Click on Activate Firmware in Firmware Management and then select the startup version of Fabric Interconnect A and Fabric Interconnect B to 203A and also select the UCS Manager startup version as 203A. Click on Ignore Compatibility Check and then click Yes on Activate Firmware. This will start the process of upgrading the firmware and you will lose the connectivity to the UCS Manager. The firmware upgrade process will take 5 to 10 minutes. During this time, you won't be able to access the UCS Manager. Relogging into the UCS Manager after a few minutes and go to Firmware Management tab. You will see firmware of all the Fabric Interconnect A and B and UCS Manager is upgraded to 203A. Also, when you click on Packages, all the latest software bundle which we just downloaded are present for upgrading firmware of other component, either by direct update or by service profile policy, which I will explain later in the video. After upgrading the firmware, our system is all being set up for further configuration. In this section, we will create service profile for B-Series Blade Server. Before creating service profile, we will create server pool and UID pool. A server pool contains set of server. A service profile or template can be associated with a server pool for rapid blade deployment. On the server tab in the navigation pan, select server pool. Enter a name and description for the pool. Click next. On this page, you have option of selecting and choosing servers and blades for the server pool. We'll select one C-series server and one blade for this pool. Click Next and Finish. 
Now we will create pool for UUID. UUID provide IDs similar to a serial number or service tag and used most prominently by virtualization software like VMware. Enter a name and description for the pool. Verify that the derived option is selected to use a UUID prefix that is derived from server hardware. In the create a block of UUID, in the from field, enter a unique randomized base value as a starting point. Now in the server pool, we have one C-series server and one B-series plate. Next, we will create service profile for B-series server using the service profile wizard in expert mode. On the server tab, in the navigation pan, select service profile under root. On the identify service profile page, enter a name for the service profile in the name box. In UUID assignment, choose the UUID suffix pool we just created and then click next. The local disk configuration policy allows the service profile to define how the block storage is structured on the local disk. In this case, we will select any configuration. You can choose various RAID options in this policy if you want. Now, under the SAN connectivity, choose the expert mode. Next, we will create worldwide node name pool. Both WWNN and WWPN pool provide unique IDs for fiber channel resource on a server. Enter the name of the worldwide node name pool. Enter a unique randomized base value as a starting point and enter the size of the block which you want to create. Now click finish. Select the worldwide node name pool we, we just created and click finish. Now add the VHBAs. Enter the name of the VHBA and now here create the worldwide port name WWPN pool. Enter the name of the pool. Again enter a randomized number here in the from field and enter the size of the worldwide port name pool. Click finish. Select the port name pool we just created. Select fabric ID as A. Keep the vSAN as default. Now we will add the second PHPA FC1 and select the worldwide port name pool we just created. Select the fabric ID as B and click OK. Networking pays allow us to define VNIC that the system present to the installed operating system. The type of mezzanine card installed on, on the Blade server affects how many VNIC may be defined in the profile and presented to the server operating system. Leave the dynamic VNIC connection policy list at its default setting for this procedure. Add the first VNIC. Now we need to create the MAC pool. MAC pool provide unique IDs or MAC address for all the VNICs. Enter the name of the MAC pool. Click Next. Enter the size of the MAC pool. Now select the MAC pool which we just created. Fabric ID will be Fabric A and now we need to define the VLAN in this case, we are creating an uplink VLAN 148 and VNIC will be part of that VLAN. If you want to define other policies like adapter policy, QS policy or network control policy, it can be easily defined on this page and, and the VNIC can be attached. Now create the second VNIC, VNIC 2 and select the MAC pool which we just created. Select the fabric ID as P and the VLAN up, uplink 148. Click OK. Now both the VNIX has been created. Now we will create boot policy on this page. Boot policy determines how a server boots. Specifying the boot device, the method, 
and the boot order. Enter the name of the boot policy and select CD-ROM as the first device as a best practice and local disk as a second device if you have local disk or you can add a boot policy for SAN. SAN boot requires manual configuration for each server performing SAN boot in a typical use case. If you have 100 server SAN boot, it would require configuring 100 server manually and individually. Cisco UCS inverts this model. You configure SAN boot policy here, configure WWPN of storage array and attach this policy to the service profile and you are done. 100 server, one step, one policy. That's the advantage of SAN boot policy, which you can define on this page. Now select the boot policy, which we just created. Click Next. On this page, you can create maintenance policy. Uh, you can avoid the server to immediately reboot when you make certain changes. So we define the policy with the name Nonk Reboot and click on Reboot Policy as user acknowledge. So whenever you do any server maintenance, it will ask for um, user acknowledgement before rebooting the server. Now select the server pool which we created in the, in the step one. Click next. This is the last page of service profile configuration where you can create many policies like uh, BIOS policies. BIOS policy enable very specific control of CPU setting that are normally accessible only through the F2 console BIOS during startup. For VMware and virtual environment that depend on CPU support for technologies like Intel virtualization technology, a corresponding policy can be easily created, removing any requirement for manual intervention during server provisioning. Similarly, applications that are sensitive to Intel Turbo Boost or hyperthreading could have their own dedicated BIOS policy reference. You can also configure BIOS policies for um, something like RAS memory configuration for power saving mode. After creating the BIOS policies, click OK and select the BIOS policies which we just created. Now click Finish. This will complete the con configuration of service profile for B-Series Blade. Now, this service profile will automatically pick a server from the server pool. In this case, uh, it selected a B-Series Blade server from the server pool and start associating uh, that server to the service profile. Now the service profile is being associated. Click on the equipment tab and the server to check which server the service profile got associated to. It's the Blade Server 1 in the B series and the overall status of this blade is OK which means the service profile is being associated correctly and this server is ready to use. Now, you can open the KVM console to the server and install the operating system on the server. In this case, I will show you how you can quickly install um, VMware hypervisor on this server. Click on the virtual media and then select the image of ISO which you want this server to boot from. We selected a VMware ESXi image and then click on reset so the server will start power cycle again and then boot from this virtual image. So overall, service profile creation is a very simple process which will allow you to define various configuration of the server. And after associating that service profile to the server, your server is ready to use. And now the server is 
ready to boot from the ESXi. This completes the installation of service profile on the B-series plate. In this step, we are going to create service profile for C-series server. Before creating the service profile, let me show you the power of template. We will create template for VNIC and VHPA. VNIC and VHPA resources are always associated with specific FIs, A-side or B-side fabric interconnect. A typical service profile has at least two VNIC and two VHPA, one bound to each side. We will create two templates, each for VNIC and VHPA. Enter the name of the VNIC, select the uplink, select the fabric ID and also the MAC pool. Click OK. Now add the second VNIC as VNIC2. Click the fabric ID as fabric P. Select the VLAN which we created earlier and also select the MAC pool. VNIC or VHPA template can be used to encapsulate both the MAC address pool or WWPN pool association as well as the fabric ID. It's very useful while creating the uh, service profile template to attach VNIC or VHPA template. For creating the VHPA template, select the name of the VHPA, select the template type as updating template, enter the name of the second VHPA, enter the fabric ID as B, select the WWN pool which we created earlier in the last step. Now we have two VNIC and two VHPA template created for use. Now we will create the service profile for C-Series server. Enter the name of the service profile. Select the UID pool which we created earlier. Select this policy as the local storage. And select the worldwide node name which we defined earlier. Now you will see the difference in creating the VHPA and VNIC by leveraging the template. Instead of entering all the information about VHPA, uh, for example, WWN information, um, any other um, adapter information, what we are doing, we are just selecting the respective template for automatically instantiating the VHPA and the VNIC. Also remember, we, we selected these templates as updating templates. This provides a very powerful feature that preserves the relationship between the template and the instantiated object. Any changes made on template will automatically get propagated to hundreds of servers instantiated from these templates. Now, both VNIC and VHPA has been created from the template. We'll select the um, boot policy which we created in the last step, CD-ROM as the first uh, boot, boot device. And also, we select the maintenance policy for user acknowledgement boot. Now, select the server pool 1 so that the uh, C-series uh, rack server will be picked up for this profile. And also, select the BIOS policy. If you want to make any changes, you can make the changes here in the BIOS policy. Uh, and click finish. Now you will see the service profile is getting associated with the server. You can see the detailed information about this association from the FSM tab which provides you a very detailed information about the current state of the server and the association. Once the progress uh, status shows 100%, the, the service profile will get associated fully with the server. Once the profile got associated, you can easily install the operating system into that server. Go to the server under Equipment tab and click on the KVM console. And then select your uh, desired operating system, ISO, and boot the server from that ISO. In this case, again, I will show you how you can easily boot the server from the VMware hypervisor ESXi CD. So it's a very simple process of creating a service profile. Once you define templates and pool, you just need to select those pools and templates and the service profile will get associated easily to a server. Select the ESXi image which you want this server to boot from. 
and then click on reset for the power cycle. Once the server um, reboot, it will uh, boot from the SXI image which we selected and this server is ready for use. This will finish the installation of CCD's service profile where we use uh, VNIC and VHP template. In the next step, I'm going to show you that how you can leverage service profile template to create the service profile for multiple server. Service profile template enable easy and rapid instantiation and provisioning of server. This template is a combination of pool, policies, and VNIC and VHPA template. Enter the name of the template and also select updating template. Updating template provides a very powerful feature that preserves the relationship between the template and the instantiated objects like VNIC, VHPA, or service profile. This will allow configuration changes to propagate at scale to hundreds of server and also enforce consistency. Both the VNIC and VHPA template facilitate uh, reuse and rapid deployment of service profile and associated VNIC and VHPA of the server. We'll leverage the VNIC and VHPA template for creating both VNIC and VHPA in this case. There is no need to enter any information like MAC address or VLAN or VSAN or Fabric ID if you are using the template. If you want to make any changes in VNIC and VHPA placement, you can make it here. Select the boot order policy which we created earlier. We need to use updating template with some caution, especially if you attach a new BIOS or firmware upgrade policy, which might result in a service interruption. Use the maintenance policy for user acknowledge reboot to avoid such disruption. Now we will create the server pool so that we can select the server uh, for this service profile template. Enter the name of the pool and also select the remaining B series and the C series rack server in this pool. Click on finish. Now we will configure firmware management policy which is very powerful and results in automatic installation of the server firmware at a given endpoint when a service profile is bound to that server. There are two types of firmware policy. One is the host firmware policy, and the second one is the management firmware policy. In host firmware policy, you will select the firmware for server and adapter endpoints, select the model number of the server and, and their adapter and uh, uh, different component, and also select the firmware version of those components. We'll select the B-series server and C-series server in BIOS and select their firmware version. Similarly, in adapter, we'll select the mm, adapter which we are using in this setup. Click OK. The management firmware package includes the Cisco integrated management controller or SIMC on that server. To upgrade the SIMC of that server, uh, click on that firmware and uh, select the firmware version. Now when you attach this policy to any service profile or service profile template and instantiate a server, that server and the associated component will automatically upgrade it as per the firmware policy. In the end, if you want to choose the BIOS policy, you can choose from this page. Now the service profile template has been created and the next step is to create service profiles from this template. Click on create service profile from this template and enter the name of the service profile and also the number of service profile which you want to create from this template. So we created two service profile from this template and both the service profile are listed here. Uh, if you want to see the detailed information about the association of service profile with the server, you can go to FSM tab and see that information. So it's very easy to create service profile from the template and attach that service profile to the server. This way, you can easily scale from one to many hundred server and configure those server uh, from the service profile. Now we will compare the firmware version of uh, um, service profile which we just created with the older service profile. This service profile has the latest firmware, 203, is being all upgraded, all the components. Whereas in server 1, 
uh, the firmware version of all the components are still old. So now you can see how firmware policy helps us to upgrade the firmware of all the component with one click. This completes the creation of service profile from a service profile template. So in summary, service profile template are very easy way to simplify the creation of new service profile and scale server provisioning and instantiation. Next, we will upgrade the firmware policy of service profile which we created earlier without using the template. We will first com compare the firmware policy of service profile created from the template with the service profile which was not created from the template. As you saw earlier, the firmware of newly created service profile from the template was all updated to the latest version 203, whereas firmware of the older service profile was at 202Q. We will attach the firmware policy to the service profile which will immediately trigger the firmware upgrade process in the server. Go to the server and under the firmware policy, select the firmware policy for both host firmware and also the management firmware. Click on Save Changes. Now this firmware policy has been applied to the service profile and the service profile will, will start associating um, these changes with the server. Now we will change the firmware policy of B-Series service profile which we created earlier. Select both host firmware and the management firmware package and click Save Changes. Now both the older service profile which had no firmware policy got the new firmware policy and it will start upgrading the firmware on the endpoints. If you want to see the details status of the firmware upgrade, you can click on the FSM and uh, see um, where the association is. So this way firmware policy can be easily used to upgrade the firmware of all the component inside the UCS system. This completes the installation of UCS setup. In summary, these are, the, these are the main steps which we did. We configured Fabric Interconnect and UCS Manager. We upgraded the firmware of Fabric Interconnect and UCS Manager. And also we upgraded the firmware of all the server comp component using the firmware policy. We set up various pools like uh, Mac pool, UID pool, w WPN pool, etc. And also we created templates for VNIC and VHPA so that we can easily leverage those templates while creating the service profile and service profile template. We created service profile for B-series and C-series server and in the end we created service profile template and instantiate both B-series and C-series server. For more information about Cisco UCS, go to cisco.com slash go slash UCS. There is an excellent UCS Advantage video series which will provide more detailed information about many innovative features of Cisco UCS. Thank you for your time today. Hope you enjoyed it.